My name's Quentin from Knife Crime Victim Support, and I wrote a poem called Knife Sentence. It resonated with a lot of people, but I felt that I should give a voice to the voiceless and ask the younger generation, the youth workers, and those that have been affected by knife crime to say the words. This is the Knife Sentence Challenge, written by myself and performed by the people. Have we ever stopped to ask that boy that carries a knife what he wants to do when he's older, if his parents are still together and what his role models are? Because I guarantee you he don't live next door to a doctor. Instead he's more likely to be riding with thugs and they're the ones in the community prescribing the drugs and driving those cars. And I wonder if, as a teenager, he's watching how the oldest carried himself in his learned behaviour. I wonder if by the age of 12 he never had a father and why? At the age of 13 he had his first by the clover. Was he ever scared? Or is it that mum don't care? Or is it that she was just never there? Maybe she's out trying to provide for her family and by the time she gets back, she feels tired and angry. Are there arguments at home? Is there a lack of affection? Are the boys outside from you protection? From the youths up the road and a different postcode? The reason why you always go the long way home? So now the olders on the block become your bigger brothers. So now it's almost like you're related to each other. <sighs> Gang related. Now we've got a council estate kid filled with hatred who needs to be initiated before he's fully affiliated. Is that environment just making you numb? It does. You have a choice or is it safety and numbness? Because they're not meant to be our mentor, that's what we need grown men for. To lead by example and to nurture ambition. To teach discipline, to understand and to listen. And I apologise for generalising, for coming across like I'm stereotyping. But we all need to know we are marginalising a whole generation when we criminalise them. Who really wants to end up in prison or dying? And the social networks make it all look exciting. The way the gangs incite violence live online. And it's followed by an advert to make sure we're still buying. And I'm not about to blame it all on drill. But thoughts become words and words become real. So tell me there's not any vested interest in what's manifesting. When all the kids can hear is I splashed him and I chefed him, dipped him outside his house and I left him. For his mum to find him, have you been to a funeral and heard a mum crying? When a son's in the ground, it sounds like she's dying. It's been like this for years, wiping those tears, printing those tears, saying, put the knife down, blaming police. Rising to our local MPs. I see mums at knife crime rallies begging on their knees like, they took my son, but make it stop, please. And it's our responsibility. Have you heard it takes a village to raise a child? But we're losing our community, so they're left to run wild. This isn't the time for our to do excuses. But the youngers need to know there's consequences for their offences. Justice will be served if you caught or let go. Because when you take a life, you forfeit your own.